I'm going to show you how to take a gorgeous, is this like just a really large votive? I don't know, tumbler, vase thing, and write on it in an easy way so that your script wraps around and around and around and around because I got this for less than $5 at Michael's, so just random craft store, and then I got these at the dollar store and I thought combining them would be amazing but it's kind of boring if it doesn't have some lettering or something. So the easy way to get lettering onto glass is to be able to trace, obviously. So something that you've already created, but it can be tricky to do it on something curved and also because I want it to wind around this, but I've come up with a way to do it. So I'm gonna take two pieces of just regular copy paper, regular printer paper. It doesn't have to be anything amazing. And I'm gonna tape them together. Now I'm doing this because, let me show you why. I always like to know the whys of things. I'm doing this because if I was to put this in this way, I have this big gap right here. So if I do it the other way and stick two of them together, it's gonna to be perfect. So that's the why. Quickly tape them and it doesn't have to, you don't have to do like a beautiful taping job. Thank goodness. Just try to do it as straight as you can and you're going to want to put a little bit of tape on the other side as well but you don't need to put a lot. There we go. Okay. Once I have my tape down, now I'm going to start to draw my template for my writing. And because I know that I want this to weave around, and because this is, let's see, pretty much the perfect size, now I can start to create my template with a weave. So I'm going to I put this into the votive and I just offset it a little bit. So this means that each line is going to be approximately an inch higher than the last. Let's move it a little bit more. So I'm going to go from here to here. If you draw a little mark there, that's going to allow you to determine your very first line for your piece. So I drew a mark on the bottom part of the paper and then this is the side of the other page. Now taking a ruler I'm going to connect those two or almost connect so I'm pretty close. If you have a quilting ruler a nice long 24 inch ruler you can just use that and you're going to draw your first line to connect from one point to the next. This is going to give you the initial angle for your piece here. Here's the next trick. Now you're going to move this point. It's going to attach over on this side over here so that it continues over. So let's see how far up this goes. It is an inch and an eight. So I'm going to move up an inch and an eighth up here. Oh, an inch and an eighth. And give myself a little mark. And now following this first line, I'm going to go from that point up at the same angle. So again, if you have one of those quilting rulers, lifesaver here. But I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't need to be totally perfect. Once I've drawn some of it, then I can just continue on in that line. And I'm going to go all the way up the rest of the page. Now, I'm, I know that my lines are, let's see, put it on the inches here, one inch and, what is this, three? Oh, this was an inch and a sixteenth an inch and three eighths. Okay, so I'm about an inch and three eighths up. So I can just put marks an inch and three eighths up all the way and then start to draw my lines. So I'll do that really quickly, this side, in the middle, and over here.
I don't want to go all the way up the sheet if I don't need to. So I'm just going to check to see if this is fitting here. And it looks like I am definitely tall enough for this votive. So now I can come along and I'm going to tape this together. I want to tape it so that it's as wide as this part of it, but I also want to make sure that I'm taping it so that the lines here actually line up with one another. So it takes a bit of finessing and wiggling around. I'm gonna fold my page just so that, because I actually don't wanna tape it yet, but this way I'll know where it should all match up because I'll have those guidelines leading from one to the other. Okay. Now, because this isn't very tall, I don't have a lot of wiggle room. So I'm going to look at my guideline here and I'm seeing that I only have really two lines of text. I would say. So I have this line here, I have this line here, I might have this one, but really I don't have it until it's a little bit lower. So I need to make sure all of my stuff fits into that. Now it's a bit tricky to do it that way. Instead, I'm going to start up at the top here and just make sure that it is enough space up at the top that I can start to write. So I'm going to start right about there. And it's just going to mean that I'm going to have to trim a little bit off the end to fit it into my votive. But for my brain, that seems to work a lot better so that I'm starting at the top of a line and working my way down. And if I can, if I put this along the top and I roll it, I'm seeing that I'm only going to get to about here. So I only have like one line all the way down to do all of my writing. Oh, my brain. So I want to write the lyrics to Silent Night. The other thing that I need to see is where my overlap point is because I don't actually have the full length of the paper. So I'm going to draw a little line for myself right, oh, oh, messy, right there. That way I know that I have to start at that point or I could have drawn it on the other side. So I only have this much space to work with. When you're writing on an angle, you still want to make sure that your writing is vertical, that it doesn't look like it's falling down the hill. So I'm just going to start to sketch it out, but making sure that I'm keeping it quite vertical. The other thing you can do if you feel you're going to have a lot of erasing is to come along and draw those guidelines in with a pen so that when you erase, you're not erasing any guidelines. All right, once you have a basic layout that you're going to follow, and of course mine has lots of mistakes, things I'm going to adjust when I go on to make the final piece, which is totally fine, um, then you can trim off any bits that you're not gonna need. So that'll make it a lot easier to fit inside your cylinder. Trim off the ends, I'm gonna trim off the top, and I'm gonna trim a little bit off the bottom. Now one thing when you trim off the bottom, because we want it to wrap, you need to make sure that you are trimming off parallel to the actual bottom of the paper, not along these lines, because then that'll just make it go around in an infinity circle. Infinity, but we want it to wrap so that it's going down like a ribbon. Okay, it's a good day. Draw. I'm just gonna draw myself a guideline. There we go, and that's parallel to that bottom line. I just sort of eyeballed it. Of course, you can be more careful and measure it out. But when you've got other stuff to do, sometimes you just need to get it done. All right, 
that one was my first cut, but I might be going in and cutting off some more off the bottom. So now I'm gonna put this inside my votive and let's test it out. I'm definitely gonna to need to get it lower. I have my writing coming out over the top, so I'll trim one more line off the bottom. And again, I'm trying to keep it parallel to this line here, the bottom of the paper. Just draw a quick line and trim that guy off. Test it again. There's lots of testing that goes into this. I'm still high. Oh no. Okay. Now here's the trick is I'm getting close to that bright. So as I'm going through, I'm going to have to be squishing that G a little bit. That's okay. You can always just make it work. It can sort of be going down into this bottom part here where the tracer can't reach, but my pen can. So now that I have managed to get that S fully inside my votive, I'm going to use my tape to set these two lines together. So lining them up again, just going to use my tape. Tape that together. And now I have a line of text that just continues all the way from the top to the bottom. I can put it inside and I am going to tape it in place here too, just so that it doesn't shift as I'm writing. And I can start to go through and write on the glass. Now, before you actually write on the glass, you want to prep it usually by just hitting it up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol or if you don't have that, well, you might have that. You might have just a rubbing alcohol swab or nail polish remover, but I highly suggest if you're using acrylic or paint pens or anything like that to have rubbing alcohol on hand because then any little mistake you do, you can just wipe it right off. Now I have a whole collection of pens that I like to use for writing on surfaces. And a lot of it just depends on what color I want to use. So. If I like, if I want to use gold, then I'll often use a Michaels Craftsmart pen. It has a slightly larger nib. Or if I want a smaller nib, I'll use like my Pen Touch pen. Both of those are great. But I think for this one, I'm going to use a black because I really want it to pop even when I have these inside. And I think that the black will still pop. So I'm gonna use a Molotov pen. This is an acrylic paint pen, so it's really nice. It will stick, but of course, just like anything else you're putting on glass, because it's a non-porous surface, it's going to wipe off if you are scratching at it. So don't scratch it, and you should be fine. I'm going to start at the top, and then work my way through the piece. One thing that's tricky is that I have, because I'm, it's round, I'm gonna have to turn it as I go. And I'm just gonna make sure that whatever I'm turning it onto is already dry.
switch to a slightly thicker nib because that will just allow me to get a lot better coverage and make sure that this design will pop because it's dramatic enough. So I need it to be thick enough to have that drama. Even though we're coloring in our lines, you do want to make sure that your thickness of your downstrokes is consistent for all of them and the thinness of your upstrokes is also consistent. That will just make your design look so much more cohesive. If you're finding like I am, grr, that your design is not lining up perfectly you can always just shift that design over a little bit and it'll give you that room to play with so right now i'm sort of freestyling a bit which makes me a bit nervous but you can always just shift the design so that you have your tracer right underneath where you're working let's do that there we go It's also extra hard to write on a surface that's curved because you just don't have that same, like the surface itself is wiggling, your hand doesn't have that same grip. So you are gonna have to be a little bit gentle with yourself, not worrying about it being absolutely perfect on that lettering. And I'm sure that with the glowing lights behind, any little wiggles is gonna be the last thing that you notice. It's kind of like makeup for a cylinder, putting lights in there. Okay, I'm getting nervous about it potentially, this one's dry, this one I can see is still wet. So before I roll any further, I'll just take a little break, let it dry, and then come back and do the next section. Now, just in case, I'm gonna put some paper down because I would hate to get this ink onto my actual tabletop. So with the paper down, then I don't have to worry quite as much. All right, let's get this party started again. It's all dry. I have my protective paper, and now I can keep going. As you go through and do your design and you're writing it on your glass, feel free to make any adjustments that you need to as you're writing it on. You might want to fill spaces or you might want to adjust your lettering ever so slightly just to make it fit together better on the votive. So don't feel like you're absolutely stuck to your initial design, but keep that creative freedom and creative license to be able to switch it up as you need to.
once you have your design as complete as possible with your tracer there, you can take your tracer out and then look for areas that you feel um, might need to be filled in, or you might think it's just fine the way it is and put your lights inside. So I'm gonna see what it looks like with my lights in it. The moment of truth. I should really have hidden the battery pack at the bottom. That's not too bad at all. Now I would take this first draft and maybe go in and this space up here, I could just put some flourishes or I could take one of these letters and try to fill in with a little bit of flourishing. But I think that for now, this is a really great start and I think that's where I'm gonna leave it. I can always hit it up later when I'm staring at it at my table, not loving it. Try to do some more to it then. But this is a simple and easy, I guess, way to be able to have that lettering that just continues all the way down your piece. You could even come and fill this in with the bottom of a line before in a song, and you could continue the end just so that it looks like it's melting off the bottom. Um, but those are things that I would go in and do afterwards. And do take the time to make one of these tracers. Remember that you want to have your cut line be parallel to the actual paper, but you want your writing line to be going around so that you can use that to follow and create your tracer. And when you're doing your lettering, you still want that to be mostly vertical, not like it's falling down the hill as it moves all the way around your votive. So, don't be afraid to find one of these in the stores and test it out. Also, if it doesn't work for you, you can always either scratch it off with like a hard metallic surface, or you can take some of your, what is it, rubbing alcohol. And, it's, oh, it almost sounds like I've been drinking alcohol here with not knowing my words. But you can take some rubbing alcohol, rub off any portion of this design that you don't like. The other thing is too, you can rub off the whole thing at the end of the season and write something completely new for the next season or for anything else that might be meaningful for you in your life. So this is something that can be used all year round.